Hey guys, welcome to another video. I hope I don't get in trouble for playing this YouTube video while I'm recording a video. I hope everyone in America here had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm so tired today that I've been just resting all day, but I finally had a little bit of energy to get up and do something. And at first I wanted to uh, tell you, to ask you to please excuse my hand, I burnt it. Uh, a very hot tea kettle lid fell and it caused all kinds of blistering. So it's very painful and sore today. Um, I've never done that. It's just so tender. It was really rough yesterday not being able to enjoy anything in the kitchen. So um, I, I'm really excited about my stocking and I wanted to tell you some wonderful things about this yarn. And I thought I would share with you a few tips about yarn dominance. So first off, the yarn. It's fabulous. I, I absolutely love the yarn. This Toku wool, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, T-O-K-U. I only wish they had more colors. I love it that much. So as I said in my last video, it does go from thick to thin quite a bit and it does have a very rustic feel. It's not the softest wool in the world, but it's not the harshest wool in the world either. It has a beautiful sheen to it and the quality of the coloring is out of this world and I love the way the yarn is starting to look like it's got a velvety appearance to it. There's a very subtle tonal quality to it that makes it feel like it's from nature. It's not heathered and it doesn't look like it's hand dyed. I, it's not, like nothing I've ever seen before and it just knits up beautifully. If you notice this section here, that looks terrible, doesn't it? Well, I have a little uh, secret to share with you. This stocking was uh, calling for a two millimeter needle and the knitting did not work well, feel well, or look well. I was just having a very difficult time getting the knitting to look good and it was very tight and I was getting this very very tight gauge. So after this section here I gave up on the two millimeter needle and said that's okay it's a stocking if it's going to be bigger let it be bigger. So I went up to a two point, sorry, it was 2.5 millimeter here, and I went up to a 2.75 millimeter needle from right here. So look at how much better the knitting started looking once I switched to a, just the next size up of needle. And so I love it. And um, I, the second I started seeing this, I immediately went, went to their website and wanted to buy a whole bunch more. Um, the problem I think for me is that I don't think I'm going to be able to wear anything with this yarn close to my skin like a hat or a pair of mittens because it's just not cold enough here. And I can't even knit with uh, this kind of wool until it gets very very cold where I live because it's pretty warm here throughout the winter. Um, the issue of going thick to thin, so I'm going to explain a few more things about that. So in my batch of wool my green and red were pretty consistently the same gauge going from thick to thin. And this white overall, sorry I'll just skip this ad here, or just, turn, okay so, this, uh, these two skeins were going from thick to thin but with the same gauge overall. This white yarn was thicker overall compared to these two and did not go from thick to thin. And so I don't know how to account for that except to say that it's random and it occurs at the spinning mill and I wasn't going to try to work with the company to get this replaced or to get these two replaced. I figured the chances are pretty good that whatever dye lot they have it's going to probably be the same and so I'm just going to stick with what I have. So I thought well this is my first time using this wool, that was the whole point is to try new wools, experience them, see what they're all about just try to use two or three skeins and if I like it then I'll be loyal brand lover forever and if I don't like it okay I'll move on and we'll just not buy that yarn again. So I, I love it and I, I would love to buy a lot more of this yarn. Um, the one big difference, so I think this yarn could be very compatible if you use it with either of the Jameson Shetland wools, either brand. Um, I've tried them both, Jameson and Smith uh, the Spindrift and the and the other, um, and I, I think they could easily be interchangeable, and especially because this uh, brand has a, uh, not a relatively smaller range of colors. Um, you 
you, if you're looking to create a project with a lot of colors, especially in the Fair Isle uh, color work uh, world, you're going to probably need um, maybe more than what this line has to offer. So I do see this as being interchangeable with the Shetland Wools or the Lou Petit Lamb's Wool, I think. Um, and so I think I would call this a boutique uh, yarn line and everything that you have heard about color in my mind absolutely meets the uh, the repute it fits with the reputation that this yarn has these colors are so rich and so beautifully dyed and so expertly created and just I, I really wish I had caught on to this a lot sooner I would have bought a lot more of it um, I cannot say enough good things about this yarn uh, the final thing I thought I would say is that the difference between this yarn and the Shetland wool is, um, and this is just maybe from my own personal experience, I haven't uh, done anything scientific, it's just my opinion, but when I was knitting with the Spindrift, I got a skein, and it was this green skein, and it just went from thick to thin really badly, and I kept thinking, well, just take that section out of the skein and just toss it, and then just keep going and it got so bad that from about right here I started getting problems where I had to keep re tearing out sections of the skein and then reapplying the skein and it just got to it got to the point where I had to reattach the yarn every round it was getting to the point where the yarn was showing some breakage with the stitches and I thought I would possibly end up with holes in my knitting and so it may not be as noticeable um, on the camera, but I definitely had a terrible time of it, and that's what ultimately caused me to abandon this project. So whenever the yarn got thin, it would just start breaking on me, and I'm a loose knitter, and so I, I don't think it was me knitting too tightly. Um, but So with this yarn, even though it does go from thick to thin, it doesn't break on you when you knit with it. And I was trying to figure out why that might be the case. And I did see that this is a blend of two different wools, a 75-25 mix. And the 75% uh, portion of that mix comes from a sheep from Finland. And the 25% comes from another sheep, I believe, from an, another country. I wasn't as familiar, but it is absolutely 100% wool. And uh, I only wish they had more colors. Uh, it, they are so bright, vibrant, and so beautiful, and everything that you hear about the dyer who's behind this line is just, it is, the quality of the color, in my mind, makes this wool so worth knitting, even if it goes from thick to thin, even if it's not the softest wool in the world, it is so exciting to knit with, so I can hardly wait to order new colors. Um, the one thing I thought uh, for myself if I were going to knit garments with this wool because this is a stocking is could I handle the the uh, it's I want to say that when you go like this it feels soft but if if it gets fairly warm it'll start to feel picky as all wools would except for maybe merino wool and so I was thinking I'm not sure if I could wear something knit with this against my skin directly like a hat or a pair of mittens because I don't live in a climate where it's cold enough to handle wool, 100% wool, that is a rustic wool. But I have seen people on Ravelry use this yarn combined with a lace weight uh, mohair silk blend yarn and make hats out of it and that looks really exciting. So if you can find a lace weight silk mohair blend um, that matches any of the colors from this line, that would be super cool. And I think that would soften it up and be really excited, so exciting. So I sort of thought about doing that as well. Just because the colors are so exciting, there's just, I, I bet people are just, the second they come out with a new color, it's going to sell it. <laughs> I was on the Barrett Wool Company website, and I they have a color of red called Jam. I think it's, uh, no, it's, there's, a, there's a particular red. They have it. I can't remember the name, but it's it was sold out for over a year and a half, and I could not get that red. And finally, the red became available. I stocked up, but there was no white. And so I've been seeing notifications of back in stock on my emails. Within 30 seconds, sold out. Twice. 
So um, I've learned the hard way. You have to keep your email, your phone uh, email app in your pocket. Look for the alert notifications and be ready to go if you really need those colors. And you have to wait for that email. So I thought I would try to end this video um, by talking about yarn dominance. Last night I saw a really sweet video. I watch Arnie and Carlos a lot. Um, just staying busy and learning new skills on YouTube and listening to their very, very, very friendly conversations. And they had a really super fun conversation that I came across on yarn dominance. And I thought, you know, I think I, I would love to add to the conversation on the internet about yarn dominance and kind of respond to what Arnie had said. So their knitting uh, philosophy is that there should be no yarn dominance. <laughs> <laughs> and my knitting philosophy is that it's okay if you have yarn dominance. So what is yarn dominance? It's when you're knitting with two colors per row and you tension one yarn more loosely than the other. And why is that an issue? Well, when you do that, the yarn that you're tensioning more loosely will... Uh, if you are familiar with paper crafting, you'll be familiar with the concept of embossing and debossing. So the yarn that you're knitting with more loosely will uh, uh, be a little bit more uh, forward and the yarn that you're knitting with more tightly will be a bit more recessed. And that's totally fine. The only thing that anyone should think about if you have yarn dominance is to consistently hold the background color and the foreground color in the same hand. So if you are consistently knitting the pattern color in your right hand, just keep knitting all the pattern colors in your right hand. And then keep knitting all your background colors in your left hand. And decide in the beginning of your project which color you want to hold in which hand. And there, it is literally up to you. So if I, because my, I'm right-handed, my right hand is stronger than my left hand, and therefore I'm right hand dominant. That means that I will have a likely tendency to tension the yarn held in my right hand a lot more firmly than I would in my left hand. And that is absolutely the case. And I've had yarn dominance issues for the entire time I've done fair isle knitting, on and off, not consistently, because I had a big gap when I wasn't doing this. But on and off, I've I've had yarn dominance issues. I've seen it, sorry, show up in my knitting. And so uh, I know that Arnie says we shouldn't have it, but we a lot of people do. And I, I don't think people should feel that their knitting is not okay by not, you know, if you can't get rid of that problem. It's just, I honestly don't think it looks bad. It just, uh, in my mind, um, if, if you just stay consistent with what, uh, yarn you hold in which hand, foreground and versus background, then you'll be consistent with your yarn dominance so that if uh, the pattern colors are going to be tighter and you would like them to be uh, more forward looking, then hold that in your left hand and vice versa. So if I wanted the uh, background to be recessed, then hold that in my right hand and hold the pattern color in my left hand and then it, uh, I would be knitting the background colors tighter and then the foreground color would be looser and it would be more uh, uh, forward. It would be more... Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say the language here, um, but it would be become... Uh, the stitches would be looser and it would be more... Um, it would look like it's a popping forward more. So. I don't have a good example to show you because I don't have any yarn tension problems with, in terms of yarn dominance on this example. I just have yarn tension problems with the wrong needle size here. And, um, but I do have an old example of something I knit a long, long time ago. And uh, this was a Dale of Norway uh, baby sweater. And I was hoping to knit a full sweater to just kind of go through the experience of knitting. And when I look at this knitting today, I think, wow, it looks like a machine knit that. I can't believe I actually knit that. But I was such a perfectionist back then 
that I was so picky with myself. I thought, what is wrong with my knitting? There's something wrong with my knitting. And in this case, I love what Arnie has to say. And Carlos, they say, you are too hard on yourself. Don't worry about it. You should enjoy it. And I wish I had finished this sweater because when I look at it now, I was like, my God, why was I being so picky? But I had a yarn dominance problem and I was so frustrated with it. And I don't know if you can see it, but this section here, this orange and white section doesn't have the same smooth appearance that the pink and white section has here and here. And that is because I was not holding the foreground color and the background color in the same, uh, in, consistently in the, the right hand and the left hand. And I think what I was doing was just changing whatever I was in the mood for. If, if this row had more orange, then I would hold that in my right hand. And if this row had more white, I would hold that in my right hand. Do you see how the yarn just doesn't uh, have the same tension in different places? That's because you could see I changed here and I changed here. And that was bothering me so much and I didn't know if it would come out with the blocking. But I, I didn't do that here and what a difference that makes. So I hope this is a good example. There's tons of examples online. I have a blog where I link to examples that talk about this and better examples than my example. So um, if, if I had a little baby and I, I could knit this, I'm sure my baby could care less. I'm sure the neighbors could care less. It's just all about learning what we like and how we like to knit and what pleases us is my, is my philosophy. So Anyways, I, I thought I would just talk about that and add that to the conversation. And then finally I was going to share something that I saw. Um, I got this really precious book. And I, I have a little bit of sad news. I, I shared this on Instagram. I have a bunny who I've had with me for over 10 years now. I, I think he was probably very close to 100 years old in human years. And... He slipped away from us um, about five days ago, so it's just been devastating for me. And um, I've been doing some different things. I, I, uh, I've, I've gotten some bunny patterns that look just like him. And I, I wish I had pictures. That was one of the things I'm going to do today is print out a lot of pictures of him and start putting them on the wall. And I have some lovely new yarn. Um, I ordered some drops alpaca wool and I'll just show you guys here and I've got some mohair yarn on the way and I'm going to try to knit some of these bunnies with this yarn and um, just kind of go through the grieving process and um, we've just been having a really tough time in our house without him. It's really devastating. I, I have this chronic pain condition and we got him and his little brother in our house about I think it's been about nine or ten years now and well a year after I came down with this condition I I just couldn't handle being so alone and so we got the bunnies and they chew up everything and they take over your house <laughs> they're the most fun playful loving children to have around and we lost um, brownie my bunnies little bunny about four years ago so it's just been my son and my 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 little brownie and uh it's just been it's just been really lonely so um anyways this is such a cute story i remembered a woman who lost her own son her human son and she had remembered this fairy tale and she had quilted an entire quilt based off of this fairy tale and i read it and it just gave me so much uh help in coping and I just uh, thought that I would just show people how beautiful it is it's just she was uh, she the, the woman who made this quilt won best of show and uh, and several quilt shows when it debuted and I think it took her a year to make this and you can see all of the children's clothing were appliqued and then the hair and the faces were all embroidered and it's just the most phenomenal thing and I could see that she put her whole heart into working on this and making this and 
the incredible expression on these children's faces just it's just phenomenal to me I can only as I looked at the pages I really understood her pain and I understood how it must have been almost impossible getting through the day and uh, I just I so appreciate see, having this book I I thought of it almost right away and I said I needed to have that book it's just it's so sweet it's just so sweet so anyways just so sweet I highly recommend this book it's it's super fun reading um, if you have small children or if you just need a quiet moment and a cup of tea and you want to ponder life and love and happiness and joy and renewal and recovery and uh, healing um, if you have sadness in your life it's it's just a really special book so thank you so much you guys for watching today and I will uh, probably post another video on my stocking as I get further along I know I'm gonna be in trouble on this stocking because when I get to the foot it calls for a zero millimeter needle and I don't see how I'm gonna knit the foot with a zero millimeter with this yarn so maybe I'm gonna end up with a foot that is way too big or I might change yarn that's a good idea oh well I'll let you know how it all works out um, when I get there so thank you for watching and thank you to all the youtubers out there that have been producing so much amazing content it has helped me tremendously and I'm sure the entire knitting community really really has so much to be thankful for uh, having each other right now so thanks for watching you guys I'll see you next time